Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss study of common laboratory techniques which includes blood withdrawal, serum and plasma separation, anesthesia, euthanasia used for animal studies by Professor Sabashik. So first we'll see the common laboratory techniques with which we normally used in experimental pharmacology. So first one is the blood withdrawal, serum and plasma separation, anesthesia and euthanasia. So first we'll see the blood collection process. So before start with the blood collection process, we'll first see the general information of blood collection. So the blood withdrawal should be limited to the lowest consistent with the need of the research. Maximum blood volume should be taken only from the healthy animals. Personal performing blood collection procedure must be appropriately trained and experienced. The maximum amount of blood that can be drawn from a rodent in any two weeks period may not exceed 1% of the animal's body weight. Now, let's see the methods of blood collection in mice. So, there are different methods which includes retroorbital sinus, lateral tail vein, Cephanous sampling, submandibular sampling, ventral or dorsal arterial sampling, and cardiac puncture. So, let's see each method one by one in detail. So, first one is the retroorbital sinus. So, in this diagram, you can see here this purple portion, it is a retroorbital sinus. It is present behind the eye. So, what we'll do, we'll take the animal and then will what we'll do we'll hold the animal neck in such a way that the eye made to bulge then with the help of capillary tube we'll insert a capillary tube medially laterally or dorsally and then the blood is allowed to flow by capillary action then the next method is the lateral tail vein in this we'll take the animal holder to hold the animal then what we'll do will locate the vein in the tail as we all aware or in order to locate the vein in the tail what we'll do we'll apply some heat lamp here so when we apply some heat lamp here what uh, what happened there there is the vasodilation and due to vasodilation the vein dilate and then what we'll do we'll insert a capillary tube and then we'll collect the blood the next is a siphonous sampling so in siphonous sampling what we'll do for uh, we'll shave the leg of the animal and then we'll locate the lateral siphonous vein okay and then once we locate the lateral siphonous vein then with the help of injection we'll collect the blood the next is a submandibular sampling so in this diagram you can see here this is the submandibular region so what we'll do we'll take the animal and will identify the submandibular region and then will insert a capillary and collect the blood. The next is a ventral or dorsal artery sampling. So here again we'll collect the blood from the tail of the animal. So here what we'll do, we'll locate the ventral artery and then we'll insert a capillary here and then we'll collect the blood. Then the last one is the cardiac puncture. So cardiac puncture allows the collection of large amount of blood from a single animal. So what we'll do, we'll locate the heart of the animal and with the help of syringe, we'll puncture the heart and collect the blood. So basically cardiac puncture uh, types of blood collection is a non-survival blood collection. The next is the methods of blood collection in rats. So different methods include the first one is the lateral tail vein or ventral tail artery, tail snipping, retroorbital plexus, jugular vein sampling, lateral or medial siphonous vein, dorsal metatarsal vein and the last one is the cardiac puncture. So all these are the different methods uh, from which we'll collect the blood in rats. So here most of the methods are same, some are different methods which includes the first one is the tail snipping. So what we'll do here, we'll take the animal and we'll cut the small portion of the tail of the animal and we'll collect the blood. So here 
we have to make sure that will not will not cut uh, and this is the method which we can use only in a extreme condition because if you not perform this particular type of method properly it will damage the tail of the animal the next is a jugular vein sampling in jugular vein sampling as we all aware of ke jugular vein is present near the neck so what we'll do will with the help of syringe will collect the blood from the jugular vein the next is the dorsal metatarsal vein so here we'll collect the blood from the vein which is present in the metatarsal of the animal now we'll see the next part that is a serum collection earlier we have seen the different methods of blood collection now the serum collection so what we'll do we'll collect the whole blood in a covered test tube usually a red top test tube always remember when the test tube top is red color that means this particular tube we will use for the serum collection so we'll collect the whole blood in a red top tube then allow the blood to clot by leaving it undisturbed at room temperature so usually it takes a 15 to 30 minutes and then remove the clot by centrifuging for 10 minutes in refrigerated centrifuge and then the resultant supernatant which we obtained is nothing but the serum they immediately transfer the serum into a clean polypropylene tube using a pasteur pipette and then will maintain this particular serum at 2 to degree centigrade now next is the plasma preparation so collect the whole blood into commercially available anticoagulant treated tubes so there are three types of anticoagulant treated tube so first one is a lavender color top tube it is basically edta treated tube then second one is a blue color top tube it is treated with a citrate and the last one is the heparin treated tube which has a green color top so mostly we will not use this heparin treated tube because it create a some type of contamination in the blood so what we'll do first we'll collect the whole blood into uh, into this anticoagulant treated tubes then remove the clot from the plasma by centrifuging for 10 minutes in refrigerated centrifuge and then the resultant supernatant we got is nothing but the plasma this plasma is then immediately transferred into the clean polypropylene tube using a pasteur pipette and then will maintain the sample at 2 to degree centigrade now next is the anesthesia so anesthesia is nothing but the word anesthesia has been derived from the greek word that means without perception of insensibility so anesthesia is a act of providing sensation free relief from pain or pain producing procedures anesthesia must be performed by a person with a knowledge of and familiarity with the drug to be used in the animal species under consideration now we'll see commonly used laboratory anesthetics so commonly used anesthetics are ketamine magnesium sulfate tribromethanol paraldehyde urethane barbiturates chloralose so first one is the ketamine so ketamine often used in combination with xylexazine then magnesium sulfate so 20% of magnesium sulfate solution is used 5 mg per kg intravenously for the animal to induce anesthesia then tribromethanol produces a good surgical anesthesia then paraldehyde is used in a dogs and cats in case of the dog 6% solution 1.2 ml intraperitoneally will given whereas in case of the cat 6% solution 2.1 ml intramuscularly will be given then urethane 25% aqueous solution 1.25 to 1.27 g intramuscularly or subcutaneously given whereas 20% of aqueous solution 1.5 g is given intraperitoneally then barbiturates so in case of the rats and mouse 0.6% solution 30 to 60 mg intraperitoneally will be given and in case of the frog 0.6% solution 50 mg intra abdominally is given to produce the anesthesia then chloralose so 10% in polypropylene glycol 80 mg intraperitoneally will be given 
Now the next is the euthanasia. So what do you mean by euthanasia? So euthanasia is an act of inducing human death in an animal. Sacrificing the experimental animal after use by gentle procedure causing a minimum of physical and mental suffering is called euthanasia. So in short, euthanasia is nothing but the painless killing. Now the objective of euthanasia. The primary criteria for euthanasia in terms of animal welfare are that the method be painless, achieve rapid unconsciousness and death, require minimum restraint, avoid excitement, is appropriate for the age, species and health of the animal, must minimize fever, fear and psychological stress in the animal, be reliable, reproducible, irreversible, simple to administer in small doses if possible and most important safe for the operator and so far as possible be aesthetically acceptable for the operator. Now we'll see the methods of euthanasia. So methods of euthanasia fall into two broad category. First one is the chemical method and second one is the physical method. So chemical method include inhalant agent, example ether, haloxethane, methoxyfurane, isofurane, Enfurane, chloroform, nitrogen, nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, argon, hydrogen, cyanide. So all these are the inhalant agent by which will induce a euthanasia to the animal. Then injectable agents, examples, barbiturates, chloral hydrate, ethanol, ketamine, magnesium sulfate, potassium chloride, neuromuscular blocking agent. Now next is the physical methods. So physical methods include penetrating, captive bolt, euthanasia by blow on the head, gunshot, cervical dislocation, decapitation, electrocution, microwave irradiation, thoracic compression, kill traps, maceration and adjunct method like exsanguination, stunning and pithing. So first one is the penetrative captive bolt. The penetrative captive bolt is an effective method of euthanasia for the use in slaughterhouses, in research facilities and on farm when the use of drug is inappropriate. The next is euthanasia by blow to the head. Personal performing euthanasia by the use of blow to the head must be appropriately trained and monitor for proficiency with this method of euthanasia and they must be aware of its aesthetic implication. The next is gunshot. A properly placed gunshot can cause immediate humane death. In some circumstances, a gunshot may be the only practice, practical method of euthanasia. Next is cervical dislocation. Cervical dislocation is a technique that has been used for many years and when performed by a well-trained individuals. Cervical dislocation is a technique that may induce rapid loss of consciousness. Next is decapitation. Decapitation can be used to euthanize rodent and small rabbit in a research setting. It involves action of cutting off head of animal. Next is electrocution. Electrocution using an electric shock has been used as a method of euthanasia for species such as dogs, cattle, sheep, swine, fox and mink. Electrocution induce death by cardiac fibrillation which causes a cerebral hypoxia. Next is microwave irradiation. Microwave instrument have been specifically designed for use in euthanasia of laboratory mice and rats. Thoracic compression. Thoracic which is nothing but cardio, cardiopulmonary cardiac compression is used to euthanize small to medium sized free ranging birds when alternate te techniques described in this guideline are not practical. So basically we use thoracic compression for the birds. 
थोरासिक कंप्रेशन इन्वॉल्व होल्डिंग द बर्ड बिटवीन द थम एंड फोर फिंगर ऑफ वन हैंड द नेक्स्ट इज किल ट्रैप्स मैकेनिकल किल ट्रैप्स आर यूज फॉर किलिंग द स्मॉल एनिमल्स मैसीरेशन मैसीरेशन वाय द यूज ऑफ स्पेसिफिकली डिजाइन मैकेनिकल अपैरेटर्स हैविंग अ रोटेटिंग ब्लेड्स और प्रोजेक्शन कॉजेज इमीजिएट फ्रेगमेंटेशन एंड डेथ ऑफ डे ओल्ड पोल्ट्री एंड एम्ब्रियोनेटेड एग्स द लास्ट वन इज अजेंटिव मेथड्स सो स्टनिंग एंड पिथिंग वेन प्रॉपरली डन इंड्यूज लॉस ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस बट डू नॉट इंश्योर डेथ देर फॉर दीज मेथड मस्ट बी यूज ओनली इन कॉम्बिनेशन विथ अदर प्रोसीजर्स सच एज फार्माकोलॉजिकल एजेंट्स एक्सेंगुएशन और डी कैपिटेशन टू यूथनाइज द एनिमल्स then the last one is extinguishment that comes under this category only so extinguishment can be used to ensure the death subsequent to stunning or in otherwise unconscious animal because anxiety is associated with extreme hypovolemia extinguishment must not be used as a sole means of to euthanize the animal animal may be extinguished to obtain blood products but only when they are sedated stunned or euthanize so these are all about the different methods of euthanasia thank you